Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have John and Ann here. I want to just go over a timeline that I think is where we are currently. This is not necessarily prophetic. It's a combination of knowing some prophetic things, some of them that are in the Bible, and the things that God showed me, which have to agree with it. This says, do not add or take away from this book in the book of Revelation. What God's really saying is the book is Biblia, or many books, which is thing that is contraindicated or, or, uh, or violates the truth in the Bible. That's what he's really saying. And uh, if you look at this timeline, this is what I expect. And we've had many experts on, done a lot of prayer and study, had many supernatural revelations and dreams over this over the last few months, but I want to put it out so people know in advance. Because there's also people that are, how can I say it, cheating. Like WebBot Project, I've heard peripherally from people saying, oh, this guy is saying all this stuff. I've been saying this for months. I wonder why he's finding it on the Internet. Just like the same people at the WebBot that say Dr. Deagle is CIA. He couldn't know all these things unless he was inside the government. That's a pile of hokey. As they say, it's a pile of horse hockey or camel manure. Uh, number two, we need to start thinking on this because we need to start repenting. And repentance is much more than just saying, gee, I'm sorry, God. It's saying, God, I'm empty. i got no answers. i got two fools here. i got Obama on one side and Romney on the other. What do I do? Well, Tom Huffling... We have Tom Huffling as our candidate that I'm going to recommend, who's truly pro-life. And by the way, Rand Paul is far more pro-life than his father, Ron Paul, who believes that states' rights can determine whether or not uh, states can determine whether or not abortion should be legal. That's not pro-life. I don't care what you call it; it's not pro-life. You can't say just like they're trying to pass a bill through the Congress now, where they're going to quote outlaw sex-selected abortions. All abortions are sex-selected. I was harassed so much I had to actually physically threatened the geneticists to stop harassing me 20 years ago when they wanted me to abort my little girl, Kelsey. Kelsey Maria Deagle, the most sweet little Down syndrome girl that literally goes with us everywhere. Travels all over the world, goes and cruises, travels whenever we go on vacation. Not all the time. We have some vacations on our own. But I'll tell you, she is such a blessing. She literally is an angel. And she's taught me a lot of things that I would never know unless God blessed me with the tribulation of having a little girl that needed heart surgery at two and a half years of age in six months. So this monster Obama and this flip Hananiah Romney that wants to smirk and smile at the same time, you don't know what he is. He's a chameleon. He will not get elected from what I can see. What I see happening is this summer we're going to have a major burp of radiation from from uh, Fukushima Daiichi, and we will see the collapse of the Japanese economy. We will see a massive... Um, evacuation of at least the area around Fukushima Daiichi in northern Tokyo. It should be much larger already, but they're not doing it. We will thereafter very shortly see a collapse of the European economy. They're already killing themselves. Right now, people with cancer and chemotherapy and heart disease can't get drugs in Greece. Really? People are jumping off the bridge. 60-year-old poet and musician with his grandmother, his mother, 90 years of age, jump off with a, in an act of defiance to say we can't feed ourselves, we can't get our medicines. And one man in front of Centigma Square blows his brains out, and the symbol now is his brains and blood spattered on a Greek map in the shape of the Greek Isles. Mm. This, mm. Is, this is a time when if you don't have a gut rage for our brothers and sisters, and I'm talking about in China, where we, where we have this blind, self-trained, legal expert now stating staying in New York University presenting a paper and a presentation to the Council on Foreign Relations about thinking how positive it is he could study in America. No, China is an abomination and it is a functionary of the British controlled United Nations and the one child policy that now has, as Mao Tse Tung said, set up by the way that by the British, that I can raise an army of two hundred thousand thousand, right out of the book of Revelation nine nine. Mao Zedong quoted Revelation 9, believe it or not, in the Red Book. People don't know that. Now, people should understand that we are, without any doubt, and I'm going to scream this from the top of the hills over Judea and Samaria, and from the, as it says, the word of God shall come down from the heavens, from the, you know, the Star Guide 3 satellite, from New York City, and from the Key Band satellite over North and South America and around the world and the Internet. People need to know the word of the Lord will be heard. And it will be heard by people that are logical. They should know that people that are scientists, that are doctors, that are special forces agents, that are geology experts like yourself, Ann and John, that are exports in your areas, that we are speaking different parts of a chorus. It's called the Song of Moses. That's right. We are speaking the Song of Moses now, singing it to the population to say, please repent, mankind. Politicians have a backbone. Don't talk about about doing this this abomination to say you're going to get rid of sex-selected abortions because it abominates the whole issue of the fact that 
all babies, even if they have a birth defect, even if they're going to die six weeks later because they have a trisomy 18, like little Bella that died, that, that nearly died here recently, and, and Centaurum had to abort his, his uh, election try. The fact is that every child has a right to live. Every senior has a right to live. And when we have 20,000 plus children die after Fukushima Daiichi, as far away as Pennsylvania in a neonatal intensive care unit, proven by mortality and morbidity reports, this isn't Dr. Deagle's conspiracy theory. Your mouth will dry up and you'll have no more spittle to spit on me or John Moore and Morrison soon because when you see the star approaching, the star of the apocalypse, the star of the, of the Passover, the spire called Heraclitus, or the, the star called the destroyer, your mouth will dry up and your eyes will become pinpoints and you'll cry out and say, what shall we do? Well, you should repent now. Because what we're facing is the end of the age as you know it. And our problem is in science. We aren't going to have some fancy, fancy science thing. And if we do, it's only because God inspires us how to do it to protect us. And if he has to literally hold his hand up to protect us, he will. But only to a repentant planet only to a repentant planet because right now what I see is people full of a lot of spittle want to spit on John and me and Ann anybody else who literally raises issues like Alex Jones who recently talked have been years talking about this now they have 30 they want to have put up 200,000 drones I think it is eventually some of them be weaponized over American soil when will people get it when will they get it when we have people like Mike Velarde that talk about the fact that the Obamacare passed two years ago by our Congress the mark of the beast is actually in it. We're going to be injected with an implantable, trackable chip. This is not theory. This is no longer out of the box. This is real. If this is an organic, if you can't smell the sulfur of the dragon of the Satan himself on your neck, you're a moron. And you're going to soon die, and it's going to hurt and leave a mark first. So I want to open up the, the, the whole issue. The timeline I see is we're going to have a disputed election. Obama's going to get back in if we don't have replace Mitt Romney by a real Christian leader like Tom Hoffling. If we don't repent as a Christian movement, the Christian right will be destroyed or completely scattered, like the ancient scattering when they called forth the 10,000 that offered to fight with, Midian, or fight, fight with uh, Gideon and his army. He only wanted those who lapped up water like the dog, the 300. He didn't want the fools to say, yeah, I want to fight. No, you don't want to fight. You want to compromise because you want to get elected. You want to compromise because you don't want to offend your relatives, your boss, get fired, lose your medical license, lose anything else because you don't want to speak out. Well, guess what? The time to speak out is now or you'll soon be silenced for good in the lake of fire. And then next year, I expect, because Obama has literally promised the Israelis, the maniacs there that wanted to destroy, couldn't care less if all the Jews die, they'll put off the Israeli war. And just when it looks so much like Armageddon is going to happen, they'll pull back where they formed a new world order and a new G20 world currency, which is part of the Mark of the Beast system, and they'll have a peace treaty, none other than Mr. Obama, will declare, with the Sanhedrin's approval, by the way, that was passed on through George Bush, the scroll of Bush, he's the only man on earth, the U.S. president, that can literally allow the rebuilding of the Temple Mount Temple of the ancient Jews and allow the sanctification on Sakat to start the last seven years of human history with the time of Jacob's trouble. And what God is saying, I shall put back the host of Judah and the host of Joseph or Ephraim and I shall have mankind repent and if, if the people of earth do not repent, they shall die. And they shall die horrifying deaths. And what I've seen when I was eight and a half and had my near-death experience, I can tell you, you don't want to know what I know. You don't. People say, I want to know everything you know, Deagle. You can't handle it. You couldn't handle it. God has put me through things that you don't want to know. And the grieving I had after the day after Mitt Romney got the nomination that makes, makes me ill to know what's coming and have people still full of spittle. Out there, you need to know that when you're hearing the words from John Moore in his program and Ann Morrison, you need to know this is it. This is not a rehearsal. This is real. This is the big show. Repent. As it says in Joel, for the day of the Lord is near. Back in a moment. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Welcome back. And, uh, John, I want you to, and Ann, take over for a moment here. If people need to know that's not acting. This is real. Uh, no, if they don't have a gut, if they don't have a gut wrenching feeling on the spirit, I call it spirit words that hit them hard today. 
if their mouth doesn't dry up so they have no more spittle, I don't know what else to do for them. Because the right. time is really short. John, I want you to fill in. You were talking this morning on your program about uh, Ambassador Murata. And ambassadors right. are not known to be flippant, so no, tell us no. all about it. Ambassadors from all countries uh, receive special training in how to obfuscate and, and how to minimize whatever it is they're dealing with. Uh, Ambassador Murata comes flat out and says that if or when uh, reactor number four at Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant it goes up, it will be the end of civilization as we know it. But it's not the only reactor. Most people don't know this. What's going on there is the Dianyi reactor and reactors all over Japan are sitting on a fault line, earthquake central, and 75% of the nuclear reactors in America are within the strike zone of a major superquake, including 25 reactors, many of them are Mark I designed, sitting literally near the New Madrid fault system. We've had pre-quake warning signs that it's going to happen. And yet, worldwide, under 450 plus reactors, we're doing nothing. We're talking right. about decommissioning these in 2022 or 2030. Sorry, you're decades too damn late because right. if you don't start moving the radioactive material off site now, not just the reactors, you're turning them off because the reactor material, if it hits the groundwater table, it's going to generate hydrogen and nuclear explosions, and you'll have dirty bombs going off all over the world. Right. We already have the effect of World War III now. And it's going to get a lot worse. Yeah, one of my confidential sources, Dr. Bill, he, he's, he's got information about the New Madrid seismic zone, and he's so concerned about it, he won't even talk to me about it on the telephone. We have to meet in person. Hopefully that will happen in the next week or so. Right. And I know you, you have contacts. And the thing is that God has appointed all of us to be witnesses. People say, well, I'd like to attack Deagle. No, i like to attack John Moore. You know, get over it, okay? Get over it. God is literally telling you to repent that there is a God out there that cares for you. He's not going to zap you up with a rapture. That's not going to happen. He's going to help us through the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you don't listen and prepare with even the simplest things of having three weeks of food and water, having seeds and self-protection, having yourself ready and being out of these big damn cities now, getting out of Chicago and these big cities now, because when disaster hits, it's too late. It's right. too well, late. You, you touched on something we, we rarely talk about. Rapture theology is bogus, non-existent, feel-good theology that has no basis in the Bible whatsoever. Yeah, it's disgusting. Actually, here's the problem with, to quote, the modern church. The modern church basically is a Laodicean church. And uh, the item comes, when I'm called to speak, people would like to speak as Dr. Deagle. Well, Dr. Deagle is actually what I call my third or fourth title. My first title is the witness of Ephraim. I come to speak as an apostle prophet. Not because I want to, because I, not in my right mind would I apply for this job. But it was prophesied 2,000 years ago to my ancestor. It's been passed down to my great uncle. I'm fulfilling that. And believe me, I tried to run from it for years. And what I have to say is the most horrifying news that anybody could give a civilization. The fact is we're there. We're there, and we can be saved out of it. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of our civilization is going to collapse. A lot of the planet could be saved. Again, God said, unless I cut those days short, no flesh would survive. Uh, but, you know, without repentance, and I don't see any repentance. I don't see any repentance on the Christian right when you have all these Christian leaders endorsing a Mormon that goes in the temple, Mormon says, in right. front of some of the play acts of Satan. Man must fall that he may know both good and evil and believes that Jesus Christ and Satan are literally brothers. I mean, come on, people. Uh, right, you need right, to get a life out there. I see individuals and little home churches and, and a church here and there that, that are repenting. But uh, for the whole, it's not happening. Right, and when I went and tried to talk even about pro-life issues, I would get three-quarters of the Catholic churches would say, yeah, this is great, come and speak. Actually, a quarter would allow me to speak if I would pay for the, the, con, you know, the, the food to set up all the chairs and the projector and so on. <laughs> the, of the Protestant churches, 95% would slam the phone so hard in my ear, I lost hearing. It's bad for business. Bad for business. Right. And the reason what I do is I warn them off because God told me, you give them these 12 questions that you're going to ask the deacons board, which must be there at your presentation, as well as the senior members of the church, including the women's group, the men's group, and the other groups that are involved there. And when I give them the 12 questions, they say, oh, gee, I don't think we're going to have uh, the ability to have you at our church. Right, right. You know well, why? Churches are businesses. That's the bottom line. They are well, businesses. Well, I said, I come to speak with a spiritual flamethrower. I don't come here as Mr. Nice Guy. I come here to ask you questions. 
like a prosecuting, cross-examining attorney in the Supreme Court of the Most High God. And it's not going to be pleasant. It's like I'm going to peel back the, and I worked in a burn unit, I'm going to peel back what's called the, the eschar of the dead flesh, and I'm going to get down to real bright flesh, and I'm going to be able to, to seal it off so that you can actually regrow tissue so you don't die of dehydration. Well, we have to do that spiritually. The church is like a dead corpse, or one soon dead, where body temperature is dropping, there's dehydration occurring, and the pulse is fading of the church. And this latest endorsement, that's why I think the next day I grieve so bad that Texas, who should know better, endorsed a Mormon as a representative of the Christians and the Christian right. Well, they may do that at the top levels, but you can't fool these Southern Christians. I know. That's why we're going to have another term of Obama, Abominator. Right. And when you see the abomination that shall desolate, standing in the holy place, doesn't that sound familiar? The abomination. Well, you know, Barak was the name of the horse that Mohammed rode to, to heaven. Right. So, you know, we have, a, we have a president named after a horse. Yeah. Well, he's a horse is whatever. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, his long title is he's a he's bisexual uh, Sunni Muslim uh, Satanist high level Mason globalist puppet run by Geppetto Soros and the global satanic regime that runs the planet through the bankers. Well, you know, he's never publicly renounced Islam, because if he did, these imams would issue fatwas for his death. But the fact is that he curtsied in a particular way. I've talked to experts on this it, before the Saudi king, which is exactly only, the only one that would know this as a high-level Sunni Muslim. And he's made a statement in... Tahrir Square three years ago, and privately, both private and public, he's a Sunni Muslim. He was raised in Indonesia as a Sunni Muslim. The fact is, even his pastors come out and said, we've already known that he was a Sunni Muslim. He never denied his, his right. Islamic faith. He just came to the church to learn more about Christianity. He never committed to be a Christian, even though he said it publicly. Just like he never, you know, he lies to us and said, well, I believe in the sanctity of marriage years ago when he wants to get elected. Now he says, well, I believe that I was actually all wrong all along. Listen to me. You belong to a men's bathhouse, to Obama. We know you're bisexual. We know you're a drug addict. We know you're completely sold out. You're a human husk. And we need to pray for this man because his little tiny fragment of human soul that's left still can be prayed for. And the, you know the reason why it's so important to pray for Obama? Because what? his boot is on our neck because we refuse to pray for him. How many people at night, I want to ask this question, pray for Hillary Clinton with a... 12 to 16 foot tall Draco reptilian monster. How many people pray for Obama that's a, what I call, avatar by the most monstrosest dem demonic entities, transdimensional black energy, dark matter monstrosities in the universe? How many people pray for Obama every night, truly for his soul to be saved? How many? Well, his, I don't know, but his soul does need to be saved, there's no doubt. And, and the problem is he's going to continue to plague us through another term unless we pray for him be relieved of his demons. Dr. Bill, I need to bail out of here, but uh, it's been a good show. Yeah. Amazing. I appreciate it, and we're going to be back in a minute with Ann Morrison continuing. We'll be joined, hopefully, by Chris Harris and Robert Felix. And if you don't feel the intensity today, you're soon going to know it in reality. We're back for a dynamic uh, half, next half hour with uh, returning from Earthquake Zone, Italy. We have uh, we have Robert Felix. Uh, you had timing. I guess you were so wiped out. You were uh, 70 miles uh, south of the earthquake uh, shattered areas of Italy. And then we also have our nuclear expert, Chris Harris. Uh, Robert, tell us uh, your travels and what happened when you were over there. Well, mainly I, I went to Italy to visit my publisher in Cesena, Italy, because they have translated not by fire but by ice into Italian. So I visited there, had to go through Bologna in order to get there. And Bologna is just 20 miles south of where that, uh, the, the epicenter of that big earthquake, that the first one killed, uh, what, seven people, and then their so supposed uh, aftershock killed another 15 people at least. But I, I was telling you earlier is that uh, my wife and I were so wiped out that we slept through the earthquake. <laughs> Didn't I, know what happened. I, I got a new tagline for your next uh, book because I'm sure that you want to make a book two of this book. Uh, I would change the title slightly. I would say uh, 
by fire and by ice. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's true. It is going to be. You know, that's the other thing is, is uh, <clears throat> I, I mentioned, too, is that there's now they're, they're using satellite measurements to measure the, the surface of the ocean, and they're saying that these same sla- uh, satellite measurements is that uh, uh, they can measure the, the ocean floor. And they expect, because of this, because the the mountains, all of these mountain chains underneath the the ocean, change the gravity pull, and they pull more water towards them, and that makes the uh, surface of the ocean get just just slightly higher in those areas. And satellite measurements can actually measure that now. And I'm going to quote this. This is this is from uh, the, the Cryosat satellite. This is a quote. This new mapping from Cryosat will revolutionize our understanding of ocean floor tectonics and reveal perhaps 10,000 previously uncharted undersea volcanoes. Wow. And we we wonder what is eating our oceans. Exactly. I mean, it's like if a, my wife has an induction uh, stovetop. So she takes her induction stovetop kettle and puts it on there, and the heat is always from the bottom, whether it's a regular element, the old curly Q element, a thermal, you know, infrared element, it's from the bottom. This idea that global warming happens from the top is a secondary and a minor issue. Now, it becomes major when you have a major surge of methane hydrates, when you have an asteroid impact, or you have a major under-oceanic volcanism event that releases, and believe it or not, at the bottom of the Macondo drill site, where they were told as literally as 1951 not to drill, there's a mile and a half to two miles thick of methane hydrates, a mile and a half to two miles thick from the ocean floor down. Mm. And each one, each volume of cubic centimeter of methane hydrates at that seafloor level, when expanded to sea level, increases by volume 600 times. So people don't understand, yes, when you have that, then you can have a major increase in thermal warming. But uh, they said recently that the part per million of carbon dioxide crossed a great transition zone that puts the Earth in grave danger. Of, I think it was 400 parts per million. Uh, they need to get a reality check. First off, there's a great deal of stretch in what's called a carbon oxygen cycle. And again, I'm an expert on this. I go did an oceanography research going back over 40 years ago. I'm an environmentalist going back one of the earliest members of Greenpeace before they went crazy over 40 years ago, so I know what I'm talking about. And the fact is that the biggest thing driving our climate <clears throat> is under oceanic volcanism and, of course, the sun. And the sun, whether it's closer to the earth or further away, and these cycles like the Milankovitch cycle, the procession of the equinox cycle, the, the cycle that's a Maunder cycle every 360 years, these are tied directly to oceanic volcanism, and they're the primary driver of increased rainfall as well as things like cosmic rays that form micronuclei that increase rainfall by forming micronuclei for rain. We know that. We're going through a zone of the galaxy where more micronuclei are present because there's more energetic particles forming more raindrops. That's just a fact. You you mentioned earlier about uh, the heat coming from beneath and not from above. You know, I wonder how many of your listeners uh, have swimming pools, and even on a hot day, do they use a fan to blow the heat across the top of the swimming pool to heat it? Wouldn't do anything. It would create a hot no, layer, nothing. and it would say, "You create a hot layer." What you have to, what, what people have to realize is, and we have a, even a climate experts. We brought in Dr. Ward recently, a few months ago. He was on a couple of years ago. He was on just a few months ago, and even talking about low-level uh, gases like sulfur dioxide, nitric oxide, etc., that can be released from under oceanic volcanoes. Mm-hmm. These can create layers that can create layers that can help to contribute to locking in that heat. But the heat has to come from below. Yes. Okay, so it's not going to come from solar warming because the sun's actually less hot than it was. It's actually not uh, increasing its solar activity. In fact, the sunspot activity and the solar amount of radiation coming to Earth is lower than normal. Even though we're in higher danger of a coronal mass ejection, we're actually getting far fewer sunspots, so there's less energy coming from the sun than, say, two decades ago. So this idea of global warming caused by these other factors is simply not valid. And the problem is whenever you take a model, and I've worked in Pascal, machine language, multi, what's called multilinear programming, because I'm an expert in many different computer languages, 
mm-hmm. you cannot you cannot make a simulated program when you leave out various different drivers or uh, we call it in your simulation program. And the people at we've talked about this with uh, with Dr. Tim Ball and others from East Anglia University that worked with the climate the university that contributed to this what I call science hoax in the United Nations. The big danger the big danger is not. CO2. The big danger is killing the benthic layer of the oceans with toxic chemicals, depleted uranium, things like cesium-137 and strontium-90 from nuclear reactors. That's dangerous because when you kill those top literally 30 feet, which make 80% of the world's oxygen, you kill what's called a carbon-oxygen cycle. When you knock down forests and you allow international banks and so on to say, ah, it's okay to knock down 200,000 acres of forest or a million acres, that's crazy. That's like cutting out your lungs and say, well, You just have to breathe less per hour, Earth. That's the Earth's lungs. And the ability to convert carbon dioxide back into oxygen, that's the problem. Once you generate so much CO2, there is a a limit of how much the body, the Earth, the the lungs of the Earth, and the cycle can actually regenerate oxygen, which we use for us breathing, for internal combustion engines, for every other industrial process requiring oxygen. The real danger comes from pollution from real pollution, but we don't see that. We want to see them focused on carbon dioxide, which is a heinous crime against logic, science, and anything that's decent about it. And at the same time, they want to dissuade us to think that it's not a galactic and solar cycle and that volcanoes, especially under the oceans, aren't the driving factor when there's 23 million volcanoes the size of a skyscraper at the bottom of the oceans and the radiator that's in the transoceanic cleft that literally is heating the planet like a radiator. And everybody wants to say, oh, that's just your conspiracy theory. It's called science. In other words, people are entitled to their opinion. They're not entitled to the facts. Well, you know, you say that that's the, the biggest danger. I, I still think the big, biggest danger is, is the way that our politicians right now are trying to destroy capitalism, and oh, of course, to, and trying to destroy but, energy. I mean, they're well, but they're but at the same time, they're, at the same time, we have stupid things going on. We have stupid things happening. Where I totally disagree with Mr. Obama, Mr. Maniac. On the one hand, he cuts off the XL pipeline, which I think is rational. On the other hand, he allows 700,000 acres of American land to be hydrofracked with toxic chemicals, and they don't even have to tell us until after it's done what chemicals they use to destroy the water table. How nuts is that? And there's plenty of safe oil areas where they can extract oil and petrochemicals. And by the way, if we simply had a source of energy, including safe nuclear, which is nuclear fusion technology, can-do reactors, which they have in Canada, pebble bed reactors, thorium reactors that will cool off quickly if you get a station blackout, none of these things are being done, not any. We're not converting San Onofre. They want to restart the damn reactor 12 miles from where I live. they got Diablo Canyon sitting on three fault lines on a na- native burial ground. 75% of the reactors in America are sitting waiting to be a Fukushima reactor disaster. And yet... We could simply convert to better technology. We could use solar. We could use all kinds of technologies. And we do have a limit of how much CO2 we can generate. But what we need to do is get back on track. The world is crazy. It's crazy. And you're right. They want to destroy science and energy, so they want us to live. Well, actually, they want to not live. They want us to die. That's why the Bilderbergers are talking about Agenda 21. They want to get rid of economies, so we have to use animal elephant dung and die of ammonia poisoning. Robert in and joining us for a quick summation, he was on yesterday, Chris Harris, uh, on our third hour yesterday. If you want to listen to that program, it was awesome. Chris Harris, a nuclear expert. What's happening in Fukushima and what are they doing here in America? Now that we've gotten rid of JASCO, we have McFarland. What's happening in Fukushima with the uh, Daiichi plant cooling pool 4? What's happening in cooling pool number uh, the uh, number 2 reactor where they now say there's new problems there? Number 3, which is a MOX reactor. What's going on, Chris? Well, we discussed already our um, uh, summation of the Achilles tendon, or the Achilles heel, excuse me, of the Daiichi Unit 4. And I know that John Moore discussed a little bit about that, and uh, a lot of people are beginning, including uh, uh, Paul Gunther, and uh, we're getting Arnie Gunderson actually on board. Also, he said, "Yeah, you know what? That's that's actually true. That uh, uh, that uh, that seal is vulnerable." 
So yeah, you're uh, talking about the seal. Now, to explain the seal. This is important. You mentioned this yesterday. The seal, the, the seal uh, is basically is starting to deteriorate where the water will completely drain out of that pool and it will be completely unstable, and the heat inside each fuel rod assembly will literally pop the cork on these assemblies, and then the corium will melt into a, it would call a lava lamp of nuclear material. Is that right? It just dawned, right. It just dawned on some of us that uh, with the slide gates pulled for the fuel, uh, between the fuel transfer tube that, uh, well, actually the fuel slot that goes between the refueling pool, or the refueling cavity, in this case is right above the reactor, and the spent fuel pool, there is a seal holding all that water up, right? So, so the next thing is this, and it is a large ring-like device that goes from the reactor vessel flange to the drywall, the interior of the drywall, and that is that forms the bottom of a pool. And you fill up this whole this whole cavity, and then you can pull the slide gate out for, for refueling, so you can transfer fuel back and forth. Well, we think that that's vulnerable, and if it starts getting shaken up too much, you know, to pull off, it can pull apart, or it can just deteriorate because at this point uh, it's been sitting there, it's been doing its job for far longer than it was intended to do. Yeah. And now that uh, we're seeing new photos, if you check E&E News on the the, uh, the boat out wall on Unit 4, if that goes, then a lot of us feel that uh, that seal doesn't have a chance in heck of it, maintaining its integrity. So, yeah, the three consequences I want to get your opinion on. The first consequence that we've been looking at over the, the number of months we've been dealing with this, Chris, is the first one is when there's a massive release of radiation, no one is going to get near any of these reactors or cooling pools in the entire Daiichi area. Number two, the coriums go to the groundwater table. If you don't have a zirconite fire, we're going to have hydrogen and nuclear explosions injecting this radioisotopes into giant plumes into the local atmosphere, into the oceans, and heading toward us. And the third consequence is there will be a mass evacuation of Tokyo and a disaster where it will finally strike the Japanese and the world financial markets, so we'll have a collapse of their economy circulating the planet, and people in America will finally, Sanjay Gupta and other people in the lame brain media will finally pick up the fact that we are being irradiated daily with a giant plume of radiation that's going to cause not only preterm deaths, but cause Granny to die a lot quicker and to give us Alzheimer's disease or heart attack or stroke or God knows what else. And when that finally hits the psyche, the sensor band of the population, they're going to freak out. Uh, well, yeah, that, and it's worth freaking out over because uh, we're not supposed to, uh, like I said, about popping the cork on those, those two. All it would take is an overheating event. You don't have to actually have a fire. So, exactly. Uh, I need to have an overheating and it pops the cork and we have a massive burp of radiation just from that alone. That's, and that's going to be plenty. Yeah. Then That'll be, in other words, if the assembly stays even intact and melts down, that'll go to pop, 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 pop. It'll be like 1,545 giant radiation tubes popping their cork in sequence over a period of probably days or hours or weeks. It'll be so dangerous that, seal, that if yeah. If the seal is gone, I'm sorry, if the seal is gone, the scary part is I don't see a remedy for it because you, you can't maintain water level in the spent fuel pool at that point. And that's, that's really where, what the big concern is. Yeah, and uh, it's important, by the way, if there's anything breaking, email me. I check it seven days a week, and we'll do an emergency report on our live stream channel and post it up on Nutramedical. But it's going to be on our live stream channel, so if you don't have a live stream membership, get one. Because we do these emergency reports all the time. Same with you, Ann or Robert, because each of you are an experts in your own area, and we need to put these reports up because the lame brain media isn't going to. That's why people don't, I, I don't see people getting ready with even civil defense. They don't understand if this happens, just this radiation cloud, it's going to cause civil chaos, and people aren't ready for it. In fact, okay, Consolo, I need, I need she actually out. wrote an article about this. I want to get your comment on this, uh, Ann and, and Robert. Consolo, who's at the, what's called Nuke Radio, has come up with an article saying that she thinks that maybe the logic behind the, uh, we talked about this yesterday, Chris, the logic behind the idea of the, uh, National Defense Authorization Act and National uh, Resources Appropriations Acts done in January and March by the Abominator were specifically because he expects a disaster in Japan to strike America and cause civil disruption. 
What well, do you think? If, if they want to go ahead and, and use uh, an emergency for that purpose, uh, I don't. I don't support it. But uh, well, you don't support. Neither do I. There's no need but, for that. But, but the thing is, uh, it's like uh, who was said. I think it was Chertoff. He said, "Don't let any disaster." I think uh, Kissinger said the same thing. Never let a good disaster go to waste. And it was Rahm Emanuel, but uh, yeah, that. Uh, but he he repeated for many other of his uh, so co minions of Satan himself. You know, Rahm Emanuel, Kissinger. Uh, Chertoff, they're all, and of course, Chertoff's name in Russian means son of the devil, by the way. Well, you know, Robert, you were talking about Agenda 21 and you know, how pervasive it was. We're fighting yeah. that in our county here, and uh, it's, there are groups already being set up like tendrils of a, of a yeah. you know, like a octopus. Yeah, so, Robert, your yeah, comments on this Agenda 21, because I'd like you to comment on what you see, because Agenda 21 is tied to this scam, a scamtastic issue. And people don't understand, we're really not stopping pollution. We're really not demanding that Chinese stop pumping out millions of tons of heavy metals every day from their smokestacks. And we we're allowing the Japanese to reburn the trash. It's bad enough to have the disaster, but literally all over Japan, they're reburning the damn trash, hundreds of millions of tons, that's reinjecting it into the atmosphere, so they're remobilizing what was already partially sequestered. You know, on, on Agenda 21, I have been hearing about that for years. People drop me emails, and, and I've just been kind of ignoring it, uh, thinking it was just a, you know, one of those conspiracy theories. And now I'm reading a book by B Brian Sussman. I'm, I'm not an expert whatsoever, but I'm, I'm reading this book by Brian Sussman, talking about it, and oh my word, I am just shocked at how bad that really is about, about, uh, um, essentially, the, the essentially it's meant to destroy the United States. It's it's just incredibly uh, incredible how bad it really is, and and I hope that that I'm going to keep on reading about it. I'll be willing to talk about it more, but I hope everybody takes Agenda 21 very very. What's the name of the book that you're reading now by Brian Sussman? I, I think it's I think it's uh, Echo Terror. Uh, yeah. Boy, I don't remember. I'll, I'll look it up and come back and tell you. It yeah, I, that's back. right. A good term. I put it in, actually, it was in the uh, Small Scroll Prophecy at, uh, 13 years ago called, I Shall Send You uh, uh, Eco-Communism and Islamic Terror. That's the, one of the chapters, uh, one of the verses of it, of that first chapter. That's, but that's what we have. It we, it's a form of eco-communism is what it is. Eco-communism. Absolutely. Eco-communism, eco-Marxism, but it's sure doing everything in its power to destroy our freedom. It's doing everything in its power to destroy what the United States is all about. Uh, yeah, uh, I call it environmental uh, communitarianism, which is basically handing over control of every resource, including even collecting water off your roof. You know you can be prosecuted in Colorado if you collect roof water? We're well, setting up a roof it, water collection system here in California because by state law, California, Washington, and other states have the right, but in Colorado, you don't. So if you collect water off your roof, the state can actually hit you with a massive fine. Even if you're up in the mountains and say Monarch or someplace collecting your roof water because it's a good place to store water off your roof or even run your garden or have emergency well, it, water. It gives the government the right to control, quote, ecosystems, but it doesn't define what an ecosystem is, so it could be... Just your swimming pool in your own backyard. It could be just the water off your roof. That is what Agenda 21 wants to do, is, is just remove that, every that's why agenda, vestige that, of freedom. That's why uh, when I went to the Strawberry Festival here in Vista, California last weekend, they had the damn San Diego Gas and Electric people talking about this issue. And the lady, I said, uh, have you tested these out or do you understand? Have you done research? Oh, my granddaughter. There's a smart meter for the gas right on the other side of the wall for her head. I said, are you aware of the DNA damage? She says, oh, no, I've researched this. I said, tell me your research. I said, well, I'm a world-class expert on this and a teacher and an activist in environmental medicine, and I'm filing lawsuits against your company. I said, you need to know your granddaughter is getting DNA damage caused by this and scalar non radioactive, non-ionizing radiation effects on epigenetics control of her DNA causing micronuclei. Do you know how dangerous that is? Brain cancer, deafness, autism, all kinds of problems. And she looked at me like all, oh, just like a deer in the headlights. And she's standing there patting these smart meters for gas and so oh, This is great. This is Gen 21. We don't like you. We turn off your damn gas or your water. Have a nice day.